Praise the Lord. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to today's uh, Divine Release Devotional. Today's topic is taking responsibility. I hope you have your pen, your book, and your Bible ready. So let us pray. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I confess to you, Holy Spirit, I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I confess to you, Holy Spirit, I have no power of my own. Sing it with me, beloved. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I confess to you, Holy Spirit, I have no power of my own. Yes, Lord, we don't have power of our own. We depend on you. Our confidence rests in you. We trust in your power. We trust in your anointing. We trust in your grace. Thank you for being there for us. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for this moment, O oh God. Speak to us, O oh God Almighty. Teach us your word. Inspire us, O oh God. We pray that all that we need for today and the rest of our lives, O oh God, to move forward and to make life better, that you put in our hands today, drop in our hearts today, even those precious ideas, direction in life, O oh God, solution to problems, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Help us, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I would like to start with a story of um, an old wise man and a young boy in a particular community. So one day, a little boy thought to himself, I'm going to make this man fail today. So he caught a butterfly and clenched it lightly within his fist and said to himself, I'm going to ask the old man to tell me the state or the condition of this butterfly. If he says that the butterfly is dead, I will gently release the butterfly and let it fly away. But if he tells me the butterfly is living, I will gently squeeze the butterfly and release the dead butterfly. So whichever direction this man is going to go, he is going to fail today. So he went to the old man and said to the old man, Old man, I have within my face a butterfly. I know there is no riddle you cannot solve. You have answers to every question. This is just a simple one for you. I want you to tell me the state or the condition of this butterfly, whether it is living or dead. The old man looked at the boy, looked at the fist, looked at the boy again, eyeball to eyeball. And then finally he said to the boy, Young boy, the state of that butterfly in your hand depends on you. And the boy was perplexed. Once again, the old man did not fail. And the boy released the butterfly and let it go. Just like the wise man told the boy, the state of the butterfly within your fist is in your hands. So it is. Whatever you are holding on to, whatever you have set your heart to do, whatever God has placed in your mind to do or your heart to do, that vision, that goal, that destiny, that business, that, that building, whatever it is you are into right now, in academics of family issues, business or ministry, everything is in your hands. The state, the condition is in your hands. Which means, therefore, that whatever we are going through, we should know that it is in our hands to improve or not to improve. That that condition or situation will change is in our hands. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. That was in John 10.10. 10. He said, the thief cometh not before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
But I have come that they might have life and have it in abundance. Jesus has given us life in abundance. So it's in our hands. Everything is already with us. He has put everything in us. Right from the book of Genesis, the Bible says that everything he created, he put the, the, the seed in, 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 in every tree he created, in every human being, every animal, he put the seed. So all we need to succeed in life is already in us. We don't need to look any further. All we need to do is to look inwards and look into ourselves. But what we need to succeed is already in us. The Bible says that he has given us all that pertains to life and godliness. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. He has given to us all that pertains to life and godliness. It's in us. We have it. So the state of our lives, the state of our business depends on us because God has already put in us what we need to succeed. It's no more rest in his hands. It's not in your hands. He has given to you. John said in 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So that's why we have already overcome. We are already overcomers. We are already overcomers because Christ that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. So if they must defeat us, they have to defeat Christ first. So have that confidence in you and face life with all boldness and with all faith in Christ Jesus. It's in you. All you need to do to succeed, overcome, is in you. You can make it. I can make it. We can all make it. We all have this great power from God Almighty. Jesus has already overcome for us and made us more than conquerors. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. So let's look at the text for today. John ch chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9. New King James Version. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Verse 5. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? Verse 7. Then the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Immediately the man was made well, took he up his bed and walked, and that was the Sabbath. Praise the Lord. Amen. That man was there at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. He had that infirmity for 38 years. He kept going to that pool at Bethesda. Although that is something to emulate, not to give up, to keep going and keep hoping. Wonderful. That is good. But one thing we must not emulate or copy from this man was that he was not really serious. He really had no passion. He really was not enthusiastic. He laid there depending on people and blaming everyone for his situation. The last thing he did was to take responsibility. He shelved his responsibility. Everyone, the other person is responsible. They refuse to put me in. Before I step in, another person goes into the pool. Nobody wants to wait for me. This is like Bible says there, they, they all had issues. They all had issues. They were there. Some paralyzed, some sick, some blind, others lame. They are all waiting for the movement of the water. Just as he too was waiting for the movement of the water. Everyone has his own issue. Even the person you go to for help, you are asking for help. He too has his own issue. She too has her own issues. We all have issues in this, in this life. We have one thing or the other, one goal or the other, one to pursue. We have a need to be met. We all have needs. But he wanted others to wait for him. And so that every attention should be on himself. He wanted attention. Does that not sound like some people? They all they want is attention. All attention on them. And that's why they remain where they are and remain in that condition because they just want people to pity for them. They want people to, to help them. And they keep complaining. Morning. Jesus had to ask him in verse 6, Do you really want to be well? That was what, what Jesus was saying. He knew that condition has been there for a long time. Beloved, I'm so touched in my spirit. I say to you, Ah, by the grace of God, God will not allow your present condition to be your conclusion in Jesus' name. That condition needs to change and has to change. They have been there for a long time. But the question is, do you really want 
want it to change? Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to move to the next level? Then stand up and rise up. So he said to him, rise up, take up your bed and walk. He was in essence telling him, it is your responsibility. You have the responsibility to rise up. Nobody will rise up for you. You have to rise up for yourself. Rise up. Jesus did not lift him up. Jesus needed him to rise up. But he was just wasting on people and blaming people. This is the fault of my mother. This is the fault of my, of my father. If they, if they have left inheritance for me, I would have been a better person. If I had a better family, I, I don't know why I was born into the family. I should have been born into a very wealthy family. In fact, it's the fault of God. Why would God make me like this? In fact, the, God does not exist. They blame everybody. It's the fault of my friend. It's my friend's fault. My friends, they don't even care. Nobody cares for me. In fact, I don't even who needs friends after all. I don't need any friends. They keep complaining. It's the fault of the pastor. It's the fault of the church. I'm leaving that church. I, I can't stay in that church anymore. There's no power in that church. They don't even care. They don't even bother. They, they blame everybody for that situation. Oh, is it for even to the extent that you can even blame the dog and the cat in their house? Is the fault of the cat? Is the fault of the uh, 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 of, of, of the dog? Is the fault of this door? The door will not open. It's his fault. Everything has fault except you. When will you start to take responsibility? You have to accept responsibility first, and then before you can take up responsibility. Responsibility you do not accept, you cannot take. And responsibility you do not take cannot work out itself. So, beloved, let us call upon ourselves. Call upon, call your name right now. Call your name and say, Michael. Put your name there and say, Michael. Approach life with more seriousness. Stop blaming others. Wake up. Take responsibility. Say it again. Michael, approach life with more seriousness. Stop blaming others. Wake up and take responsibility. I want to believe God will give you the grace to wake up, beloved, and take responsibility. You need to pray and say, Lord God Almighty, give me the grace to accept and take responsibility for my errors and mistakes, the wrong decisions and choices I made before. Father, please help me, Lord. Give me grace to accept and give me grace to take responsibility. Pray unto the Lord, beloved. Pray and I advise you, take these prayer points even now and later, sit down, take each of these prayer points as I'm going to mention. Take these prayer points up and pray for yourself. Beloved, the next prayer point is that you need to pray, Lord, I need a better and improved life, a better and improved home, better and improved marriage, better and improved job, career, business, and so on and so forth. Pray for a better and improved life. And then you need to also pray, Lord, increase my faith. I receive the grace to feed my faith with the word of God. Lord, increase my faith. And then I receive the grace to feed my faith with the word of God. The next prayer point, beloved, pray that you will not miss your timing. Pray for a restoration of the time you have lost, restoration of opportunities you've lost, restoration of any virtue or miracle or blessing you've lost. Pray for a restoration in the name of Jesus. And now, last but not the least, I would like to make prayer for those who are not born again. I don't want you to miss this opportunity. We all need the Holy Spirit to help us. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything. And without being born again, the Holy Spirit cannot come. So we need the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. First, you need to be saved. Confess with me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for going my own way. I have done wrong. Today, I believe you are my Lord and my Savior. You died for my sins and you have given me this opportunity. I'm very grateful. I know you will come again. The Lord, I will dedicate my spirit, my soul, my body, my whole life into your hands. Take control, Lord. Help me, Lord, to serve you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So I want to believe God that with that true confession that you are born again. And I commit you to the hands of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for safekeeping, for protection, for sustenance in the name of Jesus. And I pray the grace to remain a faithful and dedicated Christian will be your portion. So beloved, don't forsake the assembly of the saints together. Attend church regularly. Study the word regularly. Pray regularly. And God Almighty will keep you in the coming of Christ Jesus. Amen. And I pray for every one of us. According to Revelation chapter 3 verse 7, Jesus is the one who has the key of David. And any door he shuts is shut. Any door he opens is open. So I pray this same Lord God Almighty, we open that door for you. The door that will lead to your progress. The door of good health. The door to divine immunity. The door to plenty. The door that will, that will bring in 
a lot of blessings unto you today and the rest of your life. I pray today you have a new beginning. I pray today that God Almighty will open that door that seems so close, that, that door that refused to open to you before now. May it open on its, on its own accord, even now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the same God Almighty that shuts door will shut every door of calamity to your life. Every door that you have opened mistakenly by error or by commission. Every door that has been opened unto you by the wicked that is evil, that is negative, that wants to swallow you up, that has prevented you from making it in life. I pray such doors be shut right now by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray a new life for you, a new beginning for you, a new level for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Bless you, O God Almighty. Hallelujah. We love you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, don't forget, tomorrow is another time. Invite your friends, encourage one another, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can always have access to new videos that will be uploaded. And don't forget to click like and make your comments below. God bless you. But don't forget, righteousness exhausts a nation. The sin is a reproach to any people. Have a great day.